Good afternoon, and welcome to Eastern Kentucky University's Fall 2013 Commencement Exercises. This afternoon, we honor degree candidates in the Colleges of Arts and Sciences and Business and Technology. If I could please ask all of you to please arise for the presentation of the colors and to remain standing for our national anthem. We formed this afternoon by Cheyenne Jennings, a senior American Sign Language English Interpretation major from Danville. Please remain standing as the university singers, under the direction of Dr. Richard Waters, present my old Kentucky home.
Thank you very much. Please be seated. <clears throat> Parents, families, and friends, members of the Board of Regents, distinguished guests, faculty, and staff, thank you all very much for joining us today to celebrate with all of our fall graduates this singular milestone in their lives. Today, we formally confer, confer 970 bachelor's degrees 342 master's degrees, 111 associate degrees, and 21 doctoral degrees for a total of 1,444 graduates. That number includes many who have achieved academic distinction. We're proud of all those who are graduating with honors, but I would like to recognize at this time three groups in particular. What all those who will be graduating summa cum laude with a 3.9 GPA or higher, please stand so that we can recognize you. <laughs> Would all those who are participating this afternoon from our nationally prominent honors program as honor scholars please stand and be recognized. And finally, would all those graduates who are members of EKU's highest multidisciplinary honor society, Phi Kappa Phi, also stand and be recognized. Again, congratulations not only to these three groups, but to all those who are graduating with honors this afternoon. Throughout her 107-year history, Eastern Kentucky University has been known as a school of opportunity, and we will always hold that distinction. I am particularly proud to acknowledge this afternoon the many first-generation college graduates who are earning a degree. This means that neither their parents nor anyone in earlier generation was a college graduate. Will all the candidates for degrees who are the, the first generation in their families to earn a college degree, please stand and be recognized. Congratulations. Commencement is also the time we recognize the many others who have contributed to the success of all of our degree candidates with resources, encouragement, occasional cajoling, love, and understanding. With that in mind, I ask the following to stand as you are presented and to remain standing so that we may welcome and honor you as a group. Will the parents of the candidates for graduation please stand? All the parents. Now, will all the spouses of the candidates for graduation please stand? Our next group, will the grandparents of the candidates please stand? Now, will children and other family members of the candidates please stand and be recognized? <laughs> now, 
Now, will the faculty and staff who have instructed and served these candidates please stand? All our faculty and staff. <laughs> Degree candidates, please join me in showing your appreciation for these very important people in your lives with a generous round of applause. I would now like to recognize some very special individuals here on the platform, members of our Board of Regents. Will each regent please stand when presented and remain standing? Mr. Craig Turner, Chair of the Board from Lexington. Mr. Ernie House, Vice Chair from London. Dr. Amy Thiem, Faculty Regent from Richmond. And Sarah Carpenter, Student Regent from Berea. Please join me in greeting these members of our board and express to them our appreciation for their dedicated service. <laughs> Dr. Claire Good, our Interim Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, will now introduce our student speaker. Dr. Good. Each semester, a member of the graduating class is selected for the honor of presenting a student commencement address. This afternoon, that honor belongs to Colton Burgess of Staffordsville, Kentucky, who's graduating with a bachelor's degree in business administration. Sharon and Colton's special day today are his mother, Pamela Burgess, and his paternal grandfather, Captain Harold Burgess. I know they are proud of Colton, as are we. It is my pleasure and privilege now to introduce the student speaker for this afternoon's commencement program, Colton Burgess. President Benson, distinguished faculty and staff, family, friends, and fellow graduates, good afternoon, and thank you all for being here to share this milestone. The lessons we as students will remember come not from a textbook filled with theories and concepts, but from intelligent, inspiring, and individuals who are gifted at teaching. The most unforgettable lessons that I have been fortunate enough to be taught come from simple words used in the classroom, but have extended into other facets of my life. Oddly enough, these lessons have all come during my senior year here at Eastern Kentucky University. Senior year in college is a turbulent time for a young adult, and it was a time that I definitely needed to learn the lessons that I did. However, the path that leads us here to campus only begins on the first weekend at Campus Beautiful. I remember the first time I laid eyes on the Whitlock Building, or what we knew then as SSB, lit up on the Saturday night before classes were scheduled to begin for the 2011 fall semester. It was a warm night, and I was spending it with four of my best friends outside on the patio of Starbucks. Upon gazing at the Whitlock building, I felt opportunistic and that anything was possible. Maybe it was something in the air that night, or maybe it was a higher power commanding me to realize what I was about to embark on, but at that very moment, I knew that I was destined for something special at Eastern Kentucky University. I was unclear as to what my journey would include, I assumed that the knowledge I possessed at the time would barely be altered. I would only work alone or with familiar faces, and for the most part, all aspects of life would remain the same. Mistake number one of being in college, it never works out like you have it planned. What I thought life was all about then is far from what I know it is all about now. The inevitable changes to the way I viewed and approached everyday life happened abruptly as I was immersed in my upper level curriculum. During the spring semester of 2013 in my organizational theory class, it was made very clear to me by my professor that the truth of the class was interdependence. Thinking back on that moment, he was correct. In fact, he was correct in more than one sense. I have come to find that the truth about this stage of our young adult lives is that we depend on one another. As peers, we are designed to depend on one another's strengths and continue to build up one another. 
We take knowledge from one another. We support each other physically and emotionally. We inspire each other to do what we could not do on our own. Because of this truth, I can say with a clear and honest conscience that the faculty and students of Eastern Kentucky University have helped create a culture that will prompt others to always be willing to push a little further so that the job gets finished, no matter whose job it is. That is the Eastern way. On this day of graduation, I could not be any happier to say that I've been a part of something as special as what we have created here together. During that same semester, that same professor gave our class two pieces of advice that the entirety of the business faculty seemed to make very clear to my peers and me. I will never forget these words for the rest of my professional and personal life. Come and come prepared. Those words have echoed in my mind nearly every day of my undergraduate career upon hearing them. My professor said that in order to achieve what we as students wanted, we must abide by these words in all aspects of our professional lives. If we were too tired to get out of bed, we were violating number one, come. If we did not read the chapter or do the case analysis that we were supposed to do before class, we were violating number two, come prepared. And neither only being present or only reading the material was good enough by itself. Now that my time at Eastern Kentucky University has come to a close, I know that outside of this institution and in life in general, I have to come and come prepared. What he said are no longer mere words or rules, they are habits. I cherish this opportunity to reflect on his words and realize that on this day, we have made a habit of achieving what we set out to do. Come to think of it, I'm pleased that my, my initial plan never worked out. One could say everything went perfectly wrong, and that was part of a master plan under which I had no control over. Because of this, my capacity to learn, apply, and demonstrate has not only increased, it has multiplied. I have forged some of the most unforgettable relationships with strangers I hope to know for the rest of my life. And they are no longer strangers, they are my companions that I depend upon. Now, we have been transformed from a freshman with dissimilar pasts to a student body that does not recognize failure or defeat, but only triumph and perseverance. At the end of the day, we collectively are the power of Maroon. How far we go in life after this ceremony cannot be defined by percentages of job placement and success or failures represented merely by numbers. Where we are going after this ceremony will be defined by how we are ensuring future success from the manner in which we have inspired those around us to take on life the Eastern way. The final words I will leave you with were given to me by none other than, you guessed it, the same professor. To learn is to change. Whether our learning was voluntary or involuntary, we have learned to be opportunistic and willing to change in order to sacrifice what is needed so that anything is possible. Today, we come to walk across this stage and we are prepared to go out into the world while always finding a way to help those colonels who are in need. Congratulations, fall class of 2013. Let these moments sink in and let us relish what we have accomplished. Thank you. Well, good afternoon and welcome. I'm Craig Turner, Chairman of the Eastern Kentucky University Board of Regents. Today's an exciting day and it's an exciting time at Eastern. Early this year, the Board of Regents commissioned a national search to look for our 12th president at EKU. During that process, one name quickly rose to the top, Dr. Michael T. Benson. Dr. Benson had already served with great distinction for more than six years as president of Southern Utah University and four years prior to that at, as president of Snow College, also in Utah. Dr. Benson is a skilled administrator. He's an astute financial manager, a highly successful fundraiser, and an accomplished scholar. Eastern found a visionary leader who is also a dynamic communicator. All of these skills are necessary and needed to take this university to the next level of excellence. One of the most important factors that influenced the Board of Regents in its decision was his commitment 
and personal involvement with the student body. President Benson is committed to the su success of each and every student. He's also committed to working with the faculty and staff to foster and facilitate a learning environment that sets Eastern apart. Since arriving on our campus back in August, there's been a whirlwind of activity. Dr. Benson's first four and a half months have been marked by an air of contagious confidence and a positive can-do attitude. He leads by example. His personality and his demeanor promote an openness to change. Yet tempered by a healthy respect for tradition, he patiently listens to students, faculty, staff, alumni, community leaders, always respectful of their perspective views. Dr. Benson makes informed decisions. His ability to decide and then execute, I believe is what sets him apart. He understands at times to decide is to divide, but making the right choice is always the clear path. I find Dr. Benson also to be focused in his duties, yet never forgetting his family, which I've learned is the most important thing in his life. Interesting, he's a classically trained pianist and an accomplished athlete. Dr. Benson received his uh, undergraduate degree from Brigham Young University. He received his master's degree from Notre Dame, and he, and he received his doctorate degree from Oxford University in Great Britain. Interesting, he blogs about higher education issues for the Huffington Post. He's been named one of Utah's 100 most influential people, and he cites President Harry Truman at his le as his leadership model. I've learned that he does operate under the premise that the buck stops here. Interesting that in Eastern's 107 year history, this is the first time we have ever selected a sitting president to assume the helm. We feel very fortunate that Dr. Benson has accepted the call. He's moved his young family 2,000 miles east and proudly calls Richmond his home. I have the utmost confidence that we selected the right person for the job and our future is in good hands. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely proud to introduce our keynote speaker and the 12th president of Eastern Kentucky University, Dr. Michael Benson. Well, thank you very much, Craig. I appreciate greatly that introduction that my mother wrote for you. Uh, Craig mentioned several firsts. Uh, I'm the first guy to have to follow Michelle Obama as the commencement speaker. I'm also the first one that is speaking in front of you in, in front of this enormous video board, and no one's looking at me, I've, I've noticed. And the third thing is I am the first president, I believe, and well, let me paraphrase, or let me uh, preface that by saying, Craig mentioned my time in England, and just a few weeks ago, if you paid attention to the news, the Oxford University Dictionary officially approved selfie as a word. So I am going to be the first university president to ever do a selfie at graduation. So please follow me at EKU Prez, P-R-E-Z, and uh, the people on the floor will be able to see their photograph in that selfie. All kidding aside, in our short time here in Kentucky, I've come to appreciate three very significant things. The first is this commonwealth revolves around counties. The second is that ALH should be the eighth wonder of the world. And that basketball is not just a sport, it is a way of life. And by the way, if you all don't pay attention to me, I understand you're tracking how we're doing against the University of Wisconsin. Our team is playing as I speak. I don't know what the score is, so if anybody wants to share that. Um, last I checked, we were down 16-11, so uh, 
we'll keep pulling for the colonels. Kidding aside, I sincerely hope that today marks a celebration for you as you recognize that a bond has been formed between you and this university. Your diploma is more than just a piece of paper. It is your ticket into the world of educated persons, an invitation to join for life the Eastern Kentucky University family. From this time forward, the name, the traditions, the influence of this university are freely yours, just as your achievements, your successes, indeed, the tenor of your life will reflect on EKU. The founding of this institution is one built on blood, toil, sweat, and sacrifice. You have worked hard to reach this milestone in your life. Subsequent successes will require that same measure of sacrifice. As Thomas Paine once stated, what we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. This is a wonderful institution with rich traditions and inspiring history, and a wonderfully committed faculty and staff. In a very short period of time, my wife Debbie and I and our children have come to love Eastern. I predict that as time passes and distance widens between you and your experience at EKU, you will remember even more fondly the halcyon days in Richmond. Always remember what you have learned here, the experiences you have enjoyed, the friendships you have forged, and what the degree from EKU means to you both personally and professionally. And pledge to do something, whatever it might be, to give back to EKU in the future. I can promise you that there is nothing more rewarding than the feeling of giving back. As you consider your academic accomplishment this afternoon, reflect on these words of the inimitable Mark Twain. He once wrote, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so damn ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years. <laughs> so at the conclusion of today's ceremony, I would like each of you to find your mom or dad or another family member or friend. Give them a hug of appreciation and let them know how pleased you are at how much they've learned while you've been away at Eastern Kentucky University. <laughs> Among the many publications that arrive in my office, a scholarly journal crossed my desk the other day from Shippensburg State University in Pennsylvania. What caught my attention was the image on the front cover, a very simple photograph of Shearer Hall at Shippensburg with this inscription above the entryway. Collect whatever talent, erudition, eloquence, and authority the broad land can supply, and go forth and teach this people. These inspiring words come from the great American educator, Horace Mann, in a Fourth of July address in Boston in 1842. You graduates before us today represent an incredibly minuscule portion of the world's population in first, having access to higher education, and second, availing yourselves of the opportunity and now having earned degrees. I commend you for this accomplishment and charge you to do something with the education and experience you have gleaned. You do not earn these degrees in a vacuum, nor are you exempt from the burden to do something of benefit with this education. Don't be afraid to try and fail because, in the words of eBay CEO Meg Whitman, the price of inaction is far greater than the cost of mistakes. In the few moments I have today, I'd like to tell you a quick story. By training, I'm a historian, and I love stories. This story is about an amazing American, maybe someone about whom you do not know very much. His name was George Washington Carver. He was born into slavery in January of 1864 in a small community called Diamond, Missouri, to parents who were purchased as slaves for $700 by German-American immigrant Moses Carver. When he was one week old, he was kidnapped along with his sister and his mother by night raiders from Arkansas and brought right here to Kentucky. Moses Carver was devastated so we hired John Bentley to find his property. Only George was found, and Mr. Bentley won his ransom 
for this one-year-old, one-week-old baby in exchange for a racehorse that was valued at $300. As you know, a few months later, slavery was abolished. So Moses and Susan Carver raised George and his older brother James as their own. His parents encouraged George to pursue his educational pursuits and taught him how to read and to write. He applied to Highland College in Kansas, and he was accepted. However, when he arrived to register for classes in 1885 in person, they looked at him and rejected him because he was black. Undaunted, he traveled to nearby Ness County and manually farmed 17 acres by himself, raising all sorts of crops and fruit trees while conducting agricultural research. In 1888, he borrowed $300, an enormous amount of money, to enroll at Simpson College. And much as is probably the case with some of you graduates today, a faculty member took note of this very bright and capable young student and encouraged him to enroll at Iowa State University in Ames, where my grandfather went to school. He was the first black student at Iowa State in 1891 and later became its first black faculty member. A few years later, in 1896, Booker T. Washington was the first president and principal of Tuskegee Institute, and he invited Mr. Carver to come and join its agricultural department. This led to a long and distinguished career, focused on a whole range of uses of peanuts, over 100, as well as alternative crops to cotton, which included soybeans and sweet potatoes. It is impossible for us today, in 2013, to overstate what an enormous impact Mr. Carver's research and teaching had on the South and on agricultural practices. The development of new crops and diver diversification of crop use helped to stabilize the livelihoods of the people who had backgrounds not unlike Carver's own. This is very interesting. On top of his teaching and research in the classroom, Carver was the very first in pioneering a mobile laboratory to take lessons out to farmers in the fields. The classroom was known as the Jessup Wagon, after New York financier and Tuskegee donor Morris Ketchum Jessup. Carver's prominence as a scientific expert made him one of the most famous African Americans of his time and one of the best known African American intellectuals up to that point. Consider this, in a very segregated society in America in 1916, George Washington Carver was elected to the British Royal Society of Arts, an incredibly rare honor for an American. Admirers included Theodore Roosevelt, the King of Sweden, and even Mahatma Gandhi sought him out for his agricultural and nutritional expertise. While he was still alive, my hero, Harry S. Truman, then a senator from Missouri, sponsored a bill in favor of a monument to George Washington Carver and did so in the middle of World War II. Some argued that such a bill during wartime was an extravagance, while others argued that the bill was a wartime expenditure that was warranted because the monument would promote pat patriotic fervor among African Americans while encouraging them to enlist in the military. Interestingly enough, the bill passed unanimously in both houses of Congress. FDR, president in 1943, dedicated $30,000 to this monument in Diamond, Missouri. It is the first national monument ever dedicated to an African American and includes a nature trail, museum, and cemetery. My friends, this is an amazing man with an astounding life. And he told his students on many occasions that he expected them to live by eight cardinal virtues, which in closing I would like to share with you. Number one, be clean both inside and out. Number two, neither look up to the rich nor down on the poor. Number three, lose if need be without squealing. Number four, win without bragging. Number five, always be considerate of women, children, and older people. Number six, be too brave to lie. Number seven, be too generous to cheat. And number eight, take your share of the world and let others take theirs. Finally, on his tombstone is written this very simple epitaph. 
He could have added fortune to fame, but caring for neither, he found happiness and honor in being helpful to the world. Your task, my friends, the class of 2013, is to be helpful to the world. You enter a world that is full of tremendous uncertainty, strife, and conflict, and opportunity. One of my favorite poems is entitled Prospice by Robert Browning. A few lines from Browning's remarkable prose speak to what happens to those ready for such challenges and equipped to tackle such opportunities. Browning wrote, for sudden, the worst turns the best to the brave. The black minutes at end and the elements rage. The fiend voices that rave shall dwindle, shall blend, shall change, shall become first a peace out of pain. To the graduates today, the worst of times turns the best to the brave. This is your moment. Seize the opportunity and strive to make a difference. My advice today is simple. Stay curious, do good, contribute, give more than you take, make a difference, and go Colonels. Thank you very much. Our provost, Dr. Jana Weiss, will now proceed with the formal conferring of degrees on our graduates. President Benson, the deans of the colleges will join me in presenting the candidates for the graduate and undergraduate degrees. Dean Jerry Pogachnik will present candidates for master's degrees from the College of Arts and Sciences and the College of Business and Technology. Will the candidates for the following degrees please stand and remain standing? Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Music, Master of Public Administration, Master of Science. President Benson, these candidates have met all the requirements for the degrees and have been approved by the faculty. I present them to you for the conferring of their degrees. Dean John Wade will present candidates from the College of Arts and Sciences. Will the candidates for degrees in the College of Arts and Sciences please stand and remain standing. President Benson, these candidates have met all the requirements for their degrees and have been approved by the faculty. I present them to you for the conferring of their degrees. Dean Robert Rogal will present the candidates from the College of Business and Technology. Will candidates for degrees in the College of Business and Technology please stand and remain standing? President Benson, these candidates have met all the requirements for their, degree, for their degrees and have been approved by the faculty. I present them to you for the conferring of their degrees. President Benson. These candidates have met all of the requirements for their respective degrees and have been approved by the faculty. The deans and I present them to you for the conferring of their degrees. Candidates, the long anticipated hour has come. You are here with family and loved ones looking on. The faculty and officers of the university are gathered in witness and testimony to your conduct and purpose. Therefore, by virtue of the authority granted me by the Board of Regents of Eastern Kentucky University and with the faculty's recommendation, it is now my pleasure to confer upon each of you the appropriate degree, the requirements of which you have fulfilled, and do hereby vest each of you with the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree, your diploma confirmed and acknowledged by the great seal of the university. Congratulations.
You may please be seated. Mr. Stephen Higginbotham will now read the names of the graduates. And I'll say, as Stephen makes his way here, this is no, no small task. And he, the first session he did an admirable job. So good luck, Stephen. As the names are called, I ask each of you to show the decorum, the dignity of the occasion warrants. In this way, each graduate can receive the recognition he or she deserves. Thank you very much. Master of Public Administration, Leanne N. Lacey. Bethany Callen Nelson. Master of Arts, Tasha Alisa Bolin. Pamela Golden. Master of Music, Jennifer L. Denny. Master of Science, Jonathan Matthew Harris. Tao Jung. Kayla R. Meadows. Kevin Duane Scott. Amber R. Stanton. Master of Business Administration. David A. Campbell. Thong Min Tran. Master of Science. Michael Cody Conley. Christopher M. Cutter. Gina Joe Eigelhart. Beverly Bradford Smith. Julie Carol Spees. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Jade Bassford. Ryan Joseph Bonner. Christy Lynn Thornton. Lucy Lavana Keen. Keisha Leanne Jordan. Melanie Dawn Hall. Natalie Dawn Marie. Brittany Webb Underwood. Jennifer Marie Beston. Sarah Ansley Lance. Brittany Lynn Lewis. Allison Leslie Smith. Christopher Robert Mueller. Brian Martin Garcia. Sophia Monet Chatfield Bailey. Catherine Michelle Shacklett. Michael Cote Myers. Crystal Lynn Foth. Michael David Miracle. David Alexander Schmidt. Matthew Cole Hudson. Clinton Matthew Evans. Sean Walker Lillard. Alex Joseph Myros. 
Erica June Saltzman. Kevin Ross Jago. Sherry Benton Elam. Michelle Lynn Hansen. Rebecca Bowser. Joey Ham Hepburn. Amanda Ray Vizina. Taylor Marie Meese. Melissa Lee Martin. Robert Fitzpatrick Nolan. Sandra K. Reed. Bridget Renee Parton. Stephanie Rose Landwehr. Haley Marie Goff. Bronwyn Mar Christie Griffith. Margaret Allie Hale. Christopher Lee Stanfield. Shelley Sharp Spiggle. Eric Ray Lanham. William Luxon. Zachary E. Hornsby. Brandon Todd Wilson. George Selden III. Justin Edward Williams. David D. Carroll. Jeremy Todd Jackson. Ben Johnson Sweeney. Anna Jenkins Clark. Perry F. Sams. Robert Winfred Hobson. William Austin Tyler Stewart. Lindsay Renee Murphy. Candace Lee Brooks. Emily Ann Miller. Shirley J. Rogers. Shelby Nicole Poole. Whitley Schuyler Stringer. Karen D. Pop. Michaela B. Ballard. Chelsea Hatter. James Patrick Webb. Chelsea Ray Salyers. Summer K. Suarez. Brandon Perry Wengert. Rebecca Lynn Blackwell. Brittany Deanne Dean. Chow Ling Zhang. Joshua Austin Lewis. Tessa R. Walls. Carrie Louise Morgan. K. 
Catherine Beth Holman Samuel, Dan C. Hendrickson, Tamora Vivian Gabbard, Kathy Sue Penman, Amber Nicole Robertson, magna cum laude. Brielle Sarah White, summa cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Blanchard. Sarah Delane Hoag. Jordan Arlene Skeen. Dalton Lee Gayhafer. Christopher Alvin Ernstis. Kia M. M. Jones. Daniel Joseph Mullins. Kurt Michael Peace. Tyler Edward Anderson. Matthew Nathaniel Smith. Daniel Helton. Alana Renee Green. Mary Alicia Gibson. Jamie Cedric Deaton. Melissa Lynn Hoover. Kenneth Lee DeGrant III. Benjamin Micah Johnston. Bachelor of Fine Arts. Jill Carolyn Conrato, summa cum laude. Amelia Page Hollins. William Christopher Leslie. Bachelor of Music. Bethany Lynn Allen, cum laude. Gabriel Thomas Evans. Corey Philip Rogers. Gary Raymond Singleton. Bachelor of Science. William Darrell Mann. Candace Lee Smith. Linda Lene Adams. Jerianna C. Perkins. Brandy W. Bennett. Zachary Cade Lewis. Deborah Marie Jackson, summa cum laude. Ashley Nicole Laws. Roshan Gotham. Brooke Ashley Robbins. Tyler Joseph Osborne. Amber Marie Lieb. Michael Wesley Stansbury. Shannon Marie Colton. Samantha Jean Brewer. Devin C. Fagans. Sequana Cherie Sims. Elizabeth Lee Horn. 
Tyler Lee Lemaster. Christina Marie Von Handorf. James Albert Taylor. April Leanne Emerson. Kelsey Marie Reed. Lauren Elizabeth Cool, magna cum laude. Megan Nicole Ambergy, cum laude. Caitlin Marie Collar. Kalashan Donielle Collier. April Dawn Wyrick. Caitlin Michelle Brogel. Tash Tasha Sheree Abbott. Chastity Aaron Lawson. Brittany Lee Robbins. Sarah Michelle Gurevich. Laura Elizabeth Dollins, summa cum laude. Kelsey Denae McCoy. Jacob Allen Swinford. Nicholas Alexander Shannon. Ethan Daniel Henry. Zachary Carl Beyer. Garrett Bailey Clevenger. Harold Davidson Black. Tyler Brent Reynolds. Matthew Prentice Lee Catron. William Tyler Estridge. Joshua Wayne Morris. Stephanie Joe Schleter. Lindsay Aaron Peterson. Aaron Lillian Thomas. Lee Murray Bishop. Brian Dale Schultz, magna cum laude. Robert L. Wiseman III. Jennifer L. Kame. Rebecca Lynn Seitz. Kelsey Michelle Parker, cum laude. Wendy Michelle Hibden. Houston Thomas Brown. Seth Brian Massey. Ethan Drake Gayhart. Megan D. Keller. <laughs> Megan Lee Spaulding, magna cum laude. Jamie Rochelle Carter, cum laude. Rebecca Ann Patton. Jamie Lynn Henderson. Kirsten Leanne Edmonds. Mitchell Alexander May. Chandler Thomas Hale. William Anthony White. Natasha Painter. 
Leslie Janelle Riddle. Rebecca L. Hodskins, magna cum laude. Benjamin Corey Cook. Andre Xavier Dubois Watts. Zachary Thomas Warren. Bachelor of Social Work. Hannah Rose Scheich. Rachel Mary Morris, summa cum laude. Terry Morton Dunn. Jennifer Lynn Price, magna cum laude. William K. Kitto III. Amber Lee Kitto. Jessica Lee Kendall. Megan Elizabeth Ernst. Keisha Lynn Williams. Whitney G. Banks. Faith Mariah Smith. Candace Nicole Morgan. Victoria Lynn Ware, cum laude. Andrea Elizabeth Schmidt. Janelle Christian Shannon. Amanda Marie Pierce, magna cum laude. Amy J. Lynch. Amber Michelle Snell. Ashley Joyce Bustle. Alanda Gail Kilburn. Ashley Michelle Foster. Brittany Nicole Ellison, cum laude. Kimberly Elaine Couch. Hillary Rose House. Brittany Kathleen Anderson. Jayla Bianca Mounts, cum laude. Kayla Renee Hubbard. Rebecca Lee Smith. Jessica Marie Nelson. Associate of General Studies. Kevin Eugene Kappeler with high distinction. Miranda Kappeler. Brittany Denisa Colette. Twee Madeline Lanham. Bachelor of Art. Jeffrey Lee Dodson, magna cum laude. Tyler Jacob Oldham. Casey Lynn Cooper. Tabitha Sue Rudder. Devin Michelle Williams. 
Alyssa Rose Tinker, Ian Andrew Doyle, Ashley Lauren Tweehues, Anita Lynn Poling, magna cum laude. Raven Simone Draper. Andrew Douglas Cole. Amanda Mackenzie Davis. Whitney Marie Lowe. Nicole Lee Garland. Sarah Elizabeth Rowlett. Constance Blair Adkins. Shelby Lynn Schneed. Alexander Nicholas Brooks. Matthew Caleb Mosley. Allison Blair Combs. Sarah Marie Dunn. Amanda Beth Bowles. Jacqueline Deshay Hinkle. Joseph Holsinger. Angela Lee Bailey. Kara Danielle Farley. Megan Christina Jenkins. Jonathan L. Rigsby. Jordan Galt Cash. Adam Kaiser Cole. Horace McKinley Stratton IV. Cum laude. Stephen R. Paytek. Joseph Blake Randall. Andrew William Jennings. Jared M. Hardwick. Stephen Matthew Goff. Benjamin Chad Middleton. Nicholas Frederick Rademacher. Rachel Amberly Sissel. Nellie Catherine Francis Whitaker. Elise Diane Svoboda. Christopher Andrew McGee. Amanda McIntosh. Bachelor of Business Administration. Nicholas Philip Bergen. Kenneth Taylor Greater. George Matthew Love. Alexander Kyle Poli. Thomas John Bullock. Stephen John Cathany. Michael Douglas Heidler. Luke Robert Hole. Michael L. Henderson. Daniel Preston 
Koppenhaver, Stephen D. Shelton, cum laude, Christopher Dustin Williams, Rebecca Lynn Blanton McGee, summa cum laude, Colton Allen Burgess, Roderick Jared Dotson Harris, Catlin Dawn Delaney, Amanda Diane New, Majid Nasser Al Sadnad, Tariq Abdulaziz Alessa, Daniel Reed Powell, Christopher R. Shannon, Zachary Matthew Fox, Joseph Benjamin Hacker, John S. Underwood, Joshua Norman Thompson, Jeremy Kane Robinson, Jesse Paulus Gronenwagen, Daphne Kiani Aisa Fierce, Christian Bertrand Kaiser, Mohammed Solomon Damra, Brandon Lee Hagee, Lauren Shea Thompson, Alexandra Page Carlidge, Christopher A. Bryant, Mayeb. Alicia Dawn Mayeb, Megan Renee Coyle. Megan Dion McClellan, Victoria Isabel Gay, cum laude, Brianna Lee Boozer, Elizabeth Marie McWhorter, Billy Wilson May, cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Kelty, Kevin Lee Abbott, <laughs> Seth Corey Weddle, Adam Joseph Weintraut, Michael Joseph Spillane, Michael D. Murphy, Charles Wayne Tackett, Matthew Mogi Bell, Bachelor of Science, Dawn Lene Plunkett. Anthony Nicole Arbino, cum laude. Alexander Maines Carson, summa cum laude. Catherine Ann Thompson, magna cum laude. Russell Taylor Despain, magna cum laude. 
Joseph Taylor Martin. Stephanie Jean Hammonds. Kimberly Ann Patton. Morgan Grace Kendrick Cum Laude. Natasha Lachey Evans. Sarah Jane Meehan Gravit. James Robert White. Eric Matthew Phelps Magna Cum Laude. Trenton Scott Noel. Michael Wayne Crawford, Jr. Thomas Leo Miller, Jr. Thomas Henry Etherington. Brian Christopher Casey. Gakushi Osugi. Jordan Vincent Dorsey. John Calvin Augenstein. Caitlin Marie Tarikian. Heath Ransom Hager. Ridge Cameron Bentley. Michael John Eric Abo. Nathan Daniel Sweet. Kevin Lee Keeney. Caitlin Elizabeth Leslie. Cambra Marie Templin. Jose Antonio Soto Hernandez. Matthew Aaron Lawson. Associate of Applied Science. Colbert Thomas Gotrow II. Dustin Len O'Neill Sebastian. Stephen Walker. Associate of General Studies, Jennifer Nicole Howard. Graduates, the moment for which you have worked so long and hard is now at hand. If you have not already done so, please move your tassels from the right to the left. I would say this, this afternoon group's a little more lively than this morning, so way to go. Alumni are so very important in the life of a university, and we are so very fortunate at Eastern to have the loyal support of more than 125,000 alumni. Now I would like to introduce Glenn Raglan, president of our International Alumni Association, and ask him to offer words of well, a greeting to you, the class of 2013, and our newest alumni. Thank you, President Benson. There you go. 
I was about to thank the choir. <laughs> this afternoon, graduates, you are joining a very special group of individuals, men and women from all over the world, who have brought great honor to this institution by distinguishing themselves in their careers and their communities. In your time here at EKU, I hope that in addition to your academics, you have learned the importance of service. It is my hope that you, as you go into the communities and into the workforce, that you will give back with acts of service and that when you are settled in your career, consider giving your time to Eastern Kentucky University. Being a graduate of this institution gives me great pride, and I'm always sharing about the campus beautiful. I hope that you will find the opportunities to share with others about your experiences here. Now, fall 2013 graduates, please stand. By virtue of the degree conferred upon you by the Faculty and Board of Regents of Eastern Kentucky University, I hereby declare you to be members of the Eastern Kentucky University International Alumni Association with all the rights and privileges of membership. Congratulations. You're welcome. Be blessed. And now be seated. Thank you very much, Glenn. I would like to take this time to thank our musicians for the ceremony. Pianist Chase Moore, National Anthem Soloist Cheyenne Jennings, and the University Singers. I'd also like to recognize our banner bearers, Leanne Lacey for the Graduate School, Megan Keller for the College of Arts and Sciences, and Rebecca McGee for the College of Science, excuse me, the College of Business and Technology. Our mace bearer today is Dr. Sheila Presley, Chair of our Faculty Senate. Our sign language interpreters for the deaf and hard of hearing are Tammy Cantrell and Marcy Pertell, and we'd like to thank both of them as well. <laughs> Graduates, I call to your attention the charge to the graduating class, which constitutes the last page in your commencement program. As I had a chance to shake each hand of every graduate as they walked across the stage, and Steve did, a, I thought, a masterful job reading the names. They're not just names. These are individuals, and I know your parents and friends and family came to see your graduate today. But those names, behind every one of those names, are stories and dreams and aspirations. And now you're graduates of Eastern Kentucky University, and we wish you the very, very best. One last time, let us recognize with a hearty round of applause the 2013 EKU graduating class. If I could please ask everyone to stand now for the alma mater. It will be led by the university singers, followed by the recessional. As the recessional begins, please remain standing until the platform, platform party has left the arena floor. Thank you very much for your participation and for being with us today. <laughs> 